Right now, we have uh, Dr. Neil Carmen, and he is a, a Ph.D. in biology uh, and uh, uh, also in uh, several other areas. And we really appreciate uh, him coming on biology and chemistry because he works with some of the local uh, anti-fluoride groups who are trying to expose what this catch-all term really means, like FluorideFreeAustin.com and Ray Nadler uh, Olnick, who's also going to be in studio with us uh, coming up. Uh, but, uh, Doctor, first off, tell us about yourself, how you got involved in this, and then you've got the documents from the city of Austin, where they get this fluoride, what it really is. There's thousands of government reports. I've had top EPA scientists themselves. The majority of them have signed letters saying, please take this out. It's deadly. They know it gives uh, bone cancer, especially men. I mean, I consider in rant and rave that it, it calcifies in all the organs. But, but, but I mean, you're a Ph.D. Uh, in, in mainly plant biology, but you also study uh, what's happening uh, with uh, mammals as well and can really speak to this. So, so uh, it's great to have you here with us, Doc. Thank you, Alex. You bet. Uh, well, the concerns I have is I worked in laboratories for a long time, and uh, it's well known that uh, fluoride uh, is a very toxic substance. It's been known since about 1900 that fluorine in various forms, uh, whether it's an industrial chemical, uh, such as they're adding to the uh, Austin's uh, water supply, uh, or even some naturally occurring fluorides uh, have a certain degree of toxicity to uh, humans, animals, and plants. Uh, and so this has been known uh, worldwide for a long time. There's actually a journal, Fluoride, that is devoted to the toxicology and the health problems worldwide uh, that uh, different cultures have with naturally occurring fluorides. But we also have industrial fluorides uh, that are produced to use uh, in the um, refining industry to make high octane gasoline. Uh, and the cracking of the oil? Yes. And, and those facilities, uh, when they use fluoride rather than, uh, oh, they use hydrofluoric acid rather than sulfuric acid, it is the worst case accidental sen uh, release scenario from those types of facilities. It's used in the computer industry to set etch uh, silicon chips. Uh, because it eats uh, hydrofluoric acid, in this case, uh, will actually eat glass. It eats concrete. It's a very corrosive acidic material. Um, and so the reason I'm very concerned about the city of Austin and many other cities in the U.S. adding uh, fluoride to the water is because um, they are adding an industrial hazardous waste byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry. And much of it comes from Florida, where they do strip mining for the phosphate rock. And fluorine is a very common element in the environment. It's more common than carbon. So there is a lot of fluorine out there. But in the process of mining and processing this phosphate rock to make phosphate fertilizer, they must remove the fluoride because it would be harmful. It would kill the crops if they left it in their fer phosphate fertilizers. So they remove it, and they have wet scrubbers in several of these um, fertilizer manufacturing plants in Florida, and then they produced a waste with this uh, fluoride in it. And the product that the city buys from a chemical company in Florida that gets it from these phosphate fertilizer plants is hydrofluorosilicic acid. Okay, and we're going to go over what that is because I've had other scientists and doctors on, and there was that famous dentist who got Canada 20 years ago fluoridated, and then he went, oh, my God, I thought this was calcium fluoride, which a little bit of it is good for you. Uh, no, this this isn't even sodium fluoride. This is a catch-all for a whole bunch of toxic waste. They just dump, and it goes back, of course, for those that don't know, uh, the, the Manhattan Project, they first had to secretly, because they didn't want spies uh, being able to tell what they were doing by what was being shipped out. So they started in Tennessee and other areas dumping the different fluoride byproducts uh, from uh, purifying the uranium into the rivers. And they found, hey, we can do this, and it doesn't kill all the fish right away if we don't make it obvious. So they said, what do we do with all this toxic waste of aluminum, fertilizer, uh, uh, uranium, plutonium purification? Uh, what, we'll put it in the water. Just like to put it uranium, they had all this left over from the nuclear industry. So they said, we'll make it a weapon system, and we'll just say it's good for you and not a problem. And so now they're even putting it in construction materials. So what they're doing is, is dosing poison out, kind of like our ancestors 5,000 years ago would just dump toxic waste right in the river and let somebody handle it downstream. Now they put it directly into the water. But listen, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a degreed scientist, biologist like you are in chemistry and biology, but I know this. 
When it rains on my yard, the grass goes crazy and turns bright green. The plants are happy. When I, when it's a drought and I've got to water plants myself, the grass turns yellow. They don't even like water hose uh, city water. So I'm no scientist, but I know, and any gardener I know says, collect rainwater, whatever, don't water your plants with it. If I put a goldfish in tap water, it will die by the next day. Uh, so I've got to put chemicals in it or, or, or get a purified water to put my kids' goldfish in. So why am I drinking it? Well, uh, a fluoride is being added to the water out of this claim from the 1940s and the 1950s that's really based on bad science, that it would help uh, children primarily prevent tooth decay as they're developing. But they knew there was a trade-off, and that is that about 10% of the children would develop a condition known as dental fluorosis, which is a staining, a brown discoloration of the teeth that uh, is not very attractive. Plus bone fractures? Bone fractures, yes, because uh, fluoride, uh, actually the fluorine will replace calcium in the bones. So you get uh, the bones becoming more brittle, and it uh, can aggravate people with osteoarthritis. Uh, and so, and this isn't debated; it's all admitted. So, when I interrupted you, and I want to get back into that, Doc. You started getting into what the chemical is they're putting, what this catch-all term is, and and uh, then tell us about this particular document. I want to give people a close-up of you got from the city of Austin. Yes, uh, we have a, a contract information and also a copy of the material safety data sheet, uh, and there's one from Mosaic. Uh, which is the uh, manufacturer of the uh, chemical. And then also it's actually sold through a, a kind of a front company called Lucier Chemical Industries in Florida. But they admit to the city, and the city told us yesterday, that they get it from Mosaic. Mosaic is a merger of Cargill and IMC Global, which both operate large phosphate fertilizer uh, manufacturing plants and do the strip mining of the phosphate rock in Florida. And this is just distillate crap they'd have to pay to store in the desert. Instead, they give it to us. Well, it's actually a, uh, classified by the Environmental Protection Agency as a hazardous industrial waste that they can't put into the water or the rivers because it would be too toxic. Uh, they, they're not supposed to dump it on the land. They can't put it into the air because it's so harmful. And so they sell it uh, to the cities to put uh, in, in small amounts, they claim. And by the way, other scientists I've had on have made the point, fluoride in its, in its, in its different uh, permutations is one of the hardest things to get through, to filter, to stop, and that it, in the aggregate, builds up in your yard, in your body, in your house. This is hellish. It's a bioaccumulative uh, poison. Oh, that's the word, yes. Bioaccumulates. And so this is one of the things that the city uh, and, and other municipalities around the country don't take into account, is that uh, fluoride is bioaccumulative. But this is a toxic industrial waste that the public uh, in the U.S. Is, is not aware is being added to the water supply compared to the natural fluoride mineral salts that are in the water, but at, at lower concentrations. And by the way, it says on here for the workers dumping this in the water, don't touch this, it'll burn you, it'll kill you, it's deadly, just make sure they drink it. And it'll actually, uh, <laughs> these fluoride compounds actually will penetrate the skin. They're, they're very toxic. Well, I, I mean, just studying nerve gases that the military developed, most of them are, 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 are fluoride-based, so I don't understand how they're putting it in our water. Well, uh, that was kind of, uh, it's bad science, it's uh, whatever you want to call it, but uh, there's no epidemiological studies uh, where you've had a fluoridated community on these specific uh, industrial waste products uh, where they've looked for possible health effects. But three years ago at the Harvard Medical School, four researchers published a paper in a journal uh, on cancer in which they compared um, they found higher levels of bone cancer, osteosarcoma, a rare type of, of cancer, in uh, boys seven to eight years of age in a fluoridated community compared to a non-fluoride uh, drinking community. So they found that there was elevated rates of osteosarcoma and um you know, this study has some limitations because they looked at a small group of people. But There's a whole bunch of studies around the world. Yes, it, uh, we know that the fluoride is extremely toxic, and there's definitely uh, concerns that it is a, a human cancer causing. Well, have you heard the new thing? They're now saying mercury is good for you because it's coming out that it's in half the corn syrup. That's Washington Post. It's coming out that it's in many products. So the new spin is that mercury is actually 
good for you. I, I'm not kidding. Guys, go to YouTube and Google News Says Mercury Good For You. I'm going to play that off local news, Austin, because I, I don't want the doctor to think I'm making this up. You're going to see Fred Cantu tell you that mercury is good for you here in just a moment. But uh, please continue. Well, anyway, so uh, there's actually many studies. Three years ago, the uh, National Research Council uh, had a panel of 13 uh, scientists who are experts in toxicology, epidemiology, uh, fluoride, and chemistry, and they did a three-year review of over 1,100 studies worldwide about the dangers of fluoride in drinking water. They didn't look specifically at fluoridation, the adding of fluoride to the drinking water. They looked at the whole issue of fluoride toxicity ecology and they basically determined that uh, the uh, EPA's maximum contaminant level of four parts per million is not protective of human health.